Okay, everyone. So when we are talking about relationships, um, especially where like dating or romance is concerned, we always hear about, you know, people saying, I want somebody I'm compatible with. But it's such, I find that that's kind of a general and very sweeping sort of thing. So I was thinking about how I would break down like certain compatibilities that would probably be important to people um, in ways that they may not realize or how they could um, separate it. Because some things are deal breakers and others probably are not. So um, overall, I think people always talk about uh, financial compatibility. And sometimes I will say that the things that I hear are really um, out of balance. People want somebody who earns way more than they do so they can um, be uh, taken into a certain lifestyle and not have to do as much or um, just be a homemaker, which uh, is understandable on some levels, but um, pretty unrealistic. So uh, when you're talking about financial compatibility, um, a lot of times I also hear uh, the term equally yoked, and that's kind of where I think of um, financial compatibility or when people say equally yoked. Uh, you're talking about earning power, uh, who are the breadwinners, uh, and what their role is, what the other person's role is uh, as far as financial compatibility. And I think a lot of that is to potentially end living in financial fear um, if like most of us are living paycheck to paycheck. So two people coming together with a uh, common goal, financial compatibility, um, responsibility with your finances rather than being uh, reckless with spending, things like that um, is, is an important thing to see for people. Um, and living within your means uh, is definitely important. So financial compatibility, I would say, would be an important one because it seems like we hear that money is one of those reasons why people split, whether it's having had too little at the end or in a lot of cases having too much. So go figure. Uh, another one would be uh, your current choice of compatibility, um, your current choices. So things like guilty pleasures, um, watching particular TV shows, um, things that are more fleeting, that may be um, prone to change over time, even things um, maybe like junk food, um, things that you might grow out of, I guess is what I would be looking at. Um, choice of music um, sometimes is something that we grow out of because it can be faddish, um, how we dress, um, particular use of uh, language um, and slang, I mean, not necessarily uh, uh, profanity or anything else like that. So uh, current choice of compatibility. Sometimes those things can be overlooked, like, oh, that's, you know, it looks phasious. Um, and we're both young, so that may not be a big deal. Now, if you have age gap where somebody's older and it just doesn't look um, like something they want to participate in, um, then that's a possibility as well. And the, and the reverse, sometimes I want to be able to be wild over here and this older person might be a little too uh, conservative at this point in time. So uh, your current choices of uh, can also make for a compatible match and something to consider. Um, the, let's see, physical. And with physical, it's not just sex, it's an actual physical attraction. We can be attracted to what we think we see, you know, from the onset, but a lot of times we're um, blinded by certain things. So a lot of times guys are blinded by things they don't know about women as far as wigs, weaves, um, colored contacts, um, padded bras, uh, waist trainers. A lot of those things can skew how somebody feels about what they think they are seeing. And the reverse can be said, but I think that more women may, you know, do those things um, than guys do and can get away with it. I'm not sure um, where guys can do that. I, I don't know if you stuff your pants or just say that you're a certain endowment or something along those lines. But um, what it boils down to is being attracted to each other um, in a physical sense, um, and that can have to do with height. It can have to do with body mass index as far as body fat percentage, uh, muscularity. Uh, are you built more athletically? Women, are they more curvaceous? Um, things like that. Eye color, lip fullness. There can be a lot of things that you can be um, 
physically attracted to with somebody or just recognize that they're pretty, but that's not really for me. So I'm not really, I don't feel like I would be compatible with them. And for some people looking bigger picture, then you're talking about genetically, is this a trait that I would want to have my children pass, you know, have passed on. So there's also that as well. But physical, um, I guess, think about when you're putting yourself out there, what do you look like to yourself in a nude and all natural state? Um, parlaying that in, then we would have sexual compatibility. Um, and I know we hear a lot in, in, as far as sex goes, but we have to be realistic with a lot of things. When you get to a certain age, when you have certain stress levels at your job, if you had certain experiences in the past, some things are just not going to make you that freak in the bedroom all the time. And there's an unrealistic expectation to find that, um, every time you have sex is supposed to be, you know, just a day at the rodeo. Um, that's not how it always works, especially with longstanding relationships. I think the important part is to remain psychologically attracted to a person, going back to the previous, physically attracted. So then there's a compatibility to want to have those same sexual encounters and have the same sort of um, enjoyment going into it, not just during or after. So, um, keep the expectations real. Um, and I guess in a lot of ways, you may have to practice a certain amount of acceptance. Um, if you are long term that things may, you know, diminish over time, but then hopefully, you know, your fondness love for the person oversees those things. But a lot of times you don't, and you hear, um, things about, you know, sex souring over time. But a lot of times I feel like that's more psychological and that can go backwards into choices that can go back into the finances. So there's a lot of aspects to a sexual compatibility up front. It can be just on and popping, but I think in a lot of, in a lot of ter uh, terms, especially over time, then that has to have more, uh, the, the compatibility really does need to have some strength to it and staying power. Um, lifestyle maybe would go along with the physical, uh, and when I'm looking at lifestyle, um, staying active, working out, how are you keeping your body? Now, this is not just a, 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 a thing as far as seeing somebody. Me personally, I'm actually more for a healthy body. So yes, uh, a woman may have curves and things like that, but if she's carrying around extra poundage that doesn't need to be, I have to think in my mind, this can be a long-term concern as far as her health. Maybe not where um, diabetes or high blood pressure may be concerned, but maybe. But then you're just talking about joint problems, knees, back, hips, neck. So are these problems that I want to align myself with, with somebody who doesn't see the upside to staying trim, staying fit, staying healthy inside and out? And that can also mean mind as well. So how healthy are we emotionally, um, psychologically? So mind, body, and soul lifestyle as far as staying healthy, um, working out, staying fit, um, and like the habits that we would go along with to, uh, to create those. Got some kids in the background there. I don't want to really have them seen. Um, experience compatibility might, might be the biggest one for me because it's kind of in totality. It tells your story. It tells a lot of things about where you're at now, where you've been and the, uh, and the values that you now embody. So do we have similar lessons? What has been our growth pattern from some of our experiences? What are we willing to share? What are we not willing to share? Is there transparency? Are we in full disclosure? Have we created safe spaces, not only for ourselves, but for the people that we're bringing into our world? Because I'm sure as a lot of you know, you can get with some people that um, look good, maybe set financially, um, great uh, sexually, as far as the compatibility, good current choices, everything sounds right. And then there's that train wreck that you just don't see yet because it has yet to like unearth itself as far as a lot of uh, the issues that they've had. So for instance, uh, you know, I've come across some, uh, some women that I uh, met, talked to and things like that. Fantastic. And those daddy issues popped right up. 
One of them, it was from having a very domineering father. And one of them was because the father wasn't there. And in a lot of cases, they don't even realize it. And so and then there's a lash out at me um, as far as men. And then there's also the daddy issue as far as baby daddy in a lot of cases too. So um, I'm only speaking for me. This is not about like bashing women because you'll find guys that have um, issues as well as far as their development um, and Either way, it can be detrimental, but experience compatibility is is a huge one. Um, a lot of people will put these in different orders as far as experience, um, current choice compatibility, financial compatibility, physical, sexual, lifestyle, all of those things, you know, it's kind of like trying to pick your, you know, top five, you know, favorite athletes or movies or something like that. We'll put these in different order based off of what is uh, important to us and that list in itself can show what uh, compatibility range with someone else would um, would would show as far as how good of a match we are so um, just my thoughts hopefully this uh, is something that a lot of you have thought about if not it's something to think about and something that you can retool not only your dating but your long-term relationship. Hey, you know, me and my wife have been together for a long time. We're hitting some rough patches. What are our compatibilities? How are we still seeing things the same? Maybe it's time to sit down and say, this is something that I deem more important as far as the children or the school district we live in, or we can downsize the house. Are we compatible with some of these choices that we want to make in life? Um, and with full transparency to say, you know, have a good open, honest talk about it. Um, and create that list. And it's not un, uncommon or it's not crazy to have like these kind of cool, uh, interesting talks up front with people you're dating because it's a great way to find out. Is this something that I would take long term? And if you know physically um, up front and for some of you sexually that it's really not matching with the current uh, choices that I find, you know, uh, to be important. It's not really matching with, um, they, I'm not sure how they are financially. Um, it's fair. It, it, it is fair to, um, to make those, uh, make those checklists and things like that. So, um, experience overall is one that I find the most important, but I would not argue with if somebody put some of the other ones in place, but, um, these are just my thoughts. Hopefully this is something that gives other people something to think about. You can feel free to leave comments, um, questions. I don't know what I can answer, um, but I will do my best. Uh, concerns with the list. Uh, maybe there's something to this list that you would add, any one of them. So um, that would be fantastic. It, it's all meant to just uh, create a conversation that we can all have. So guys, I'm going to uh, pop out now. Please uh, remember that subscriptions to the channel are free and they are appreciated. So um, with that, I will wish everyone a good day and hope this finds you in good, uh, good health and spirits. Peace, love, unity, solidarity.